I want to talk for a few minutes this morning about the title, Hold On To Your Habits. One of the things that we talked about last week as a community, as a church, is that this could be a really great season for us to go deeper in our prayer lives. One of the pillars, along with connect and help, is to pray. And that the kingdom of God advances through prayer and action. And maybe for many of us right now, the action part of advancing the kingdom isn't so easy to do but maybe we could advance the kingdom more through our prayers. But having said that, I personally, I'll level with you this week, I found it incredibly difficult to pray myself on my own. And I wonder whether some of us are struggling in the same way. I think the reasons I've been trying to work out why that is, I think for me, the main one is probably because the usual routines and structures of my life have been shot. They're not really the same as they were two weeks ago. And I'm quite somebody who follows routine and, and discipline. And so when those aren't there, my prayer life is affected as well. I think also I've um, struggled with a little bit of anxiety. Uh, many of us maybe do this week as well. And so often I have all these thoughts and fears floating around in my head, but I don't always find them easy to kind of get out of my head into prayer before God. And then also, I think a part of me is a little bit frustrated with God right now. And um, I've been rather keeping God maybe at arm's length when exactly the time I should be drawing near to him. I've been a little bit distant. And so this message, hold on to your habits, it's for any one of us who maybe is feeling a little bit distant from God right now, maybe a bit dry. And of course, the longer we leave that, the harder it can be to row back. And so I want us to think about that quickly at the beginning of this season, how we can put in place habits that are really going to see us through this season. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 5 to 7, St. Paul writes this, The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but with everything, by prayer and petition, present your requests to God. And the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of Christ Jesus. The Lord is near, he says. Jesus has not gone anywhere. He's still sovereign. He's still the Lord of heaven and earth. And he is near. He's near in time and in space. And for some of us, it's a test to see how near Jesus can be to us, not just when we're all gathered together in the church building, but right now in our living room or in our front room or watching this on a laptop or a phone or a smart. TV. But Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. He is near. He says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, present your request to God. I think he's talking here about a mechanism by which we can pray and draw near to God. It's a mechanism by which we take all the anxieties that are floating around in our heads and systematically, intentionally, almost write them down, present them as a way of giving them over to God. And I find this um, incredibly helpful. In a moment, I'm going to teach you a very simple way of praying, which I found useful when I'm feeling a bit distant from God and I want to reconnect with him in prayer. But of course, prayer is basically the mechanism by which we connect. If you're feeling distant from God this morning, whenever you're watching this, now is the time to start praying because it in itself, quite apart from what you're praying for or about, in itself, prayer is connection with God. Just before I show you that little model, it says, with thanksgiving. And I think that's a really useful exercise. What I try and do, I don't always manage it, but what I try and do um, each day is write down or think in my head of 10 things right now that I'm grateful for. And uh, sometimes it's a struggle to think of 10 and sometimes it's easy. And I, 
But if you think of everyday things, often the things that we take for granted, like the sunshine, or that we've got a roof over our heads, or that we have at least got some food to eat, or that we have got someone who will phone us or we can ring or we're connected in our uh, groups in some way. Actually, you can get up to five or six or ten uh, really easily. So with thanksgiving. So this model for praying, I'm going to show you a really simple model that I picked up about three or four years ago from an American pastor called Rick Warren. And this really helped me at the time when I was feeling a little bit distant and disconnected to God. And it gave me a way of praying that covered everything and also connected me back to God. And of course, in that scripture, it says in everything, uh, there's no big requests or small requests to God. They are just prayers. Uh, I think they're all the same to him. And what this pastor Rick Warren said is, look, you've got your hands, prayer hands. And sometimes the um, scriptures talk about lifting our hands in prayer. And he said, on your left hand, you've got five fingers, the thumb and the four fingers. And each of those is going to be something that you pray, who you pray for. And then on your right hand, what you pray for. So this is a really easy way of praying. And you can do this in two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes. So the first is your, on your left hand. These five things are who to pray for. First of all, your thumb. Your thumb is nearest to your heart. So on your left thumb, I pray for my family and my friends, the ones who are closest to my heart. Then my index finger or my first finger, a first finger, I think and I pray for leaders. And I think particularly of leaders of our government, uh, leaders in the church, uh, local leaders, uh, leaders right now in hospitals, uh, in all manner of leaders. Then the third finger on my left hand, who to pray for? Well, this is the tallest finger. And so I pray for influencers. Who are the influencers right now? Uh, They are, I think, the scientists, uh, perhaps people working in media, Uh, people who are social media influencers, who are setting the tone uh, for good or bad in our nation. So I pray for influencers. Then the fourth finger. This is the weakest finger. If you notice the the fourth finger. So that reminds me to pray for those who are weak right now. The vulnerable, uh, the sick, uh, the elderly. People um, I think of perhaps who are struggling in areas of mental health. And then the fifth finger is the littlest finger, and I pray for myself. There's nothing wrong with praying for yourself. It's just that I don't pray, or I try not to pray for myself first. So that's who to pray for. And then on the right hand, again, five. This this right hand is for what to pray for. So with the thumb, uh, the thumb is, again, closest to my heart. So I pray for my heart. Uh, The Bible says that out of our heart, we live our lives. Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart. Uh, Out of the overflow of your heart, you speak and act. So this is um, the prayer that I pray around my heart. I say to God, is there, how is my heart with you? Is there anything that's coming between you and me? And I pray as well for the heart, not only of myself, that it would be pure and clean and blameless, but also uh, the heart of others around me. Um, because I can't change the hearts of people, people I live with, people that I interact with, but I can pray for them and the Holy Spirit can change their hearts. And maybe I find this particularly helpful if there's anyone uh, in your life that you're not getting on too well with at the moment. Rather than telling them, try praying for them that the Holy Spirit will work in their hearts. Then the index finger, the first finger on your right hand, uh, what to pray for. I, I pray that's the one about leadership. I pray for uh, my uh, priorities, that today, that whatever else I'll do, uh, that I will put God first. And Lord Jesus, what do you want me to do today? Is there a particular person that you want me to call? Help me, show me, what do you want me to prioritise? Then the third finger, the tallest finger, I pray for my example I pray that I would be an example in the way uh, that I live uh, in this way. That's the thing that is seen, the tallest finger. So what is it about me that's going to be seen today that will help encourage and influence others? Then the fourth finger on the what. 
I pray for my relationships. And I pray particularly that I would display the fruit of the Holy Spirit in all my relationships today. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, self-control, or all, all those. And I, I, if there's particular fruit that I think I'm a little bit uh, bare on, I ask particularly, maybe it's patience or love, I ask particularly that I would display those today in my relationship. And then finally, the little finger on my right hand, uh, what to pray for. I pray for my resources. Again, there's nothing wrong of praying that God would bless you with what you need financially, with your health, um, practically. And so I pray, again, it's not the first thing I pray for, um, but I do pray for that. And just after this scripture, a little bit later in Philippians, uh, St. Paul says that my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. Uh, all our needs, not all our greeds, but it's good to ask him and to pray for our needs. So should we recap uh, together as we finish? So first of all, on your left hand, this is who to pray for. On your thumb, you pray for uh, your uh, loved ones nearest to your heart, uh, your family and your friends. The index finger, uh, you pray for leaders. Third finger, the tallest finger, you pray for influencers. The fourth finger, the weakest finger, you pray for the weak, the poor, the vulnerable, the ill, the elderly, the isolated. The fifth, you pray for yourself. Then what to pray for on your right hand, nearest your heart, you pray for your uh, heart. Your index finger, this one, uh, you pray for your priorities. Your third finger, you pray for your example and influence. Your fourth finger, I pray for my relationships. And my fifth finger, I pray for my resources. And I find that when I'm disconnected with God and I'm struggling to pray, this is a really useful model because it covers everything. And I can do it in two minutes, or actually once I start thinking about some of these particular categories, I can pray a bit longer. And by the end of that time, whether it's two minutes or five minutes or 10 minutes, first of all, I feel like I've brought everything to God in prayer. By prayer and patrician, present your request to God. I've covered all the bases, but also in doing so, it's got me into the rhythm and the routine and the habit of praying again. The next week, I want us to think, I want to talk about the issue of control how we deal in this season when things feel out of control and we are out of control. Uh, but right now, I want to give an opportunity to pray for you. And I particularly want to pray if you are feeling yourself a little distant or disconnected with God. So may we pray together. Maybe if this is you, if you're feeling that you're struggling to pray, you're struggling to connect with God, uh, you're feeling distant from him. If you'd like to, just wherever you're sitting watching this, you could maybe just hold out your hands like that, um, or maybe put a hand on your heart, or maybe if you've got other people in the room, if you want to, just raise a hand, and then they could come and um, pray uh, for you as I pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your promise that you are near and for your invitation to bring all our prayers and our requests like petitions before you. And we particularly want to pray this morning for any of us who are struggling this week to pray or to connect with you. And we pray that you would help them, send your Holy Spirit afresh, fill them and reconnect them with you today and this week. In Jesus' name, amen.